Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. Mr. Farmer, how are you? You know what? We're busy today. Yes, we This are. has been a long day. Mm -hmm. I mean, a really long it day is. because we've got wonderful things behind us. It you takes a while canning. for it to get there. Now, today we're going to show you a couple of things. We're going to show you how to can some fish. Mm -hmm. All right, what happens when you go out and have a really successful day fishing? Say you go out and you catch your limit of white bass, right. hybrids, striper, that's a whole lot of fish. Oh yeah. So maybe your freezer, our freezer, is overloaded. Mm -hmm. We still gotta get a half a pig in there. Yeah, we do. So what do you do? Now we've showed you how to can venison. Mm -hmm. Your papa. Yes, he likes Wild to Bill. We did something with him years and years and years ago. But I'm gonna update you on canning fish. There are no shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And if you really look in depth at it, I would rather go pints than quarts because a pint is a whole lot of fish. Yeah. Now, depending on how you use this fish, you can use it in chowders. Right. It's really good in a chowder. You can use it in sandwiches. Mm -hmm. You can make mayonnaise and oh, make yeah. your sandwiches, so on and so forth. Or eat There's, it right out of the jar. You can eat it right out of the jar. Think, of, think about um, a smoked canned fish like the kippers that we get. Mm -hmm. Love those. Think about the smoked trout. We could do right. that. We could can trout. Good idea. Salmon. Some people down the road who we're going to need to visit mm -hmm. are growing tilapia and they grow Good vegetables fish. as well. Yeah. So we're going to take some of that. Be careful with your store-bought tilapia. Know where it comes right. from. Right. Know what it was fed, so on and so forth. Now, last week the kids were here. Hmm. They about killed us. We survived. We chased them around and just... just right. No sleep. We realized that we're just... Too old for kids. Too old for kids. <laughs> but the grandkids are wonderful because yeah. we can take them back. That's right. We can give them caffeine and mm -hmm. chocolate, wind them up, send them back, and everything's good. They had fun. They cried when they went home. They, they did. They're gonna they miss did us. have fun. Yeah. We went fishing. We did. The last day, they wanted to go fishing so bad, so we took them fishing. You know what? We had a great time. We did. We'll show you a little bit of that trip right here. You, Papa. Now, they both caught their first bass. They did. Which was fantastic. They were excited. I talked to Sammy. You know, kids love bows and arrows and things like that. Right. Now, we talked about bow fishing. Now, the carp that are in the tailwaters, the big head carp and the silver carp, mm -hmm. not supposed to be here. Right. We had a little chat with the kids about that as well while they were here. Let's talk about that kind of fish, which absolutely is really good canned. Now, they have some little fine bones that cans just fine. Right. When you can them and you cook them under pressure, those bones just dissolve. So let's take a look at some of the equipment that we use for that and we'll show you that real quick and visit with the kids for just a second. Sammy, what do you think this arrow is for? Shooting. Shooting what? Fish. Shooting fish. Now you know what? A lot of people get their dinner different ways. Sometimes we go to the store mm -hmm. and get our dinner. Sometimes we raise our vegetables here. Sometimes other people raise our vegetables. Sometimes we hunt in the woods and I bring home a deer and we have deer recipes or we'll right. quail hunt. Sometimes I take this bow and arrow with this funny looking end. See that right there? That's got a barb on it. So when I see a great big fish and I want to shoot that fish, look right here, Sammy. That right there goes through the fish and then this barb holds it. So I push my little button right here, I pull my bow back, grab my hold that if you will. Now because, I'll have to do this sideways, but because I only have the use of my one arm from a motorcycle wreck, I shoot the bow like this. Grab it with my teeth, pull back, and release by opening my mouth. Now, we are going down to Barclay to get some of these fish, 
And we're also going to talk about these in the next couple of weeks, how good they are to actually eat. Now, they have a bad stigma because they have the name carp at right. the end. But these are not an indigenous species. They've been introduced accidentally into this country. Now they're wreaking havoc. So the more that we can get out of the water, the better. So here's a shot of me shooting a fish, a big one. Watch this. This is how this works. Look, biggest fish I've ever stuck. Dude, it's a hog. It's not even right. This may be the biggest fish I've ever stuck with an arrow. I can't even hardly believe how big this fish is. Never in my life seen such a fish. <laughs> All right, let me explain what just happened here. Our goal today was to come to Barkley, find one of those invasive species of big head carp, and try to find one, and what, what my goal was, and still is, is to take one of these things home and clean it and try different recipes on it, because there's enough meat on one of them for four or five meals. Because if a person could learn, learn to utilize this meat, it would be a heck, oh, there's a huge one right there. It would be a great way to get a bunch of fish in the freezer. I don't know how much this fish weighs, but it's almost as big as I am. Have you ever seen anything like that in your life? <sighs> okay. All right, that's ridiculous. So this was a fish that I shot down below Barkley. There are millions of them down there. Nikki and I went down there a couple weeks ago, and here's some pictures of the, some of the fish that we shot. Here's a little bit of video of me shooting, so on and so forth. It's absolutely legal to shoot any rough fish species. I could shoot a gar, and if they're a native species, I could shoot a spotted gar, I could shoot any kind of gar, but I'm not gonna do that. These are the only thing I will shoot right now and let back to die. Because again, they're an invasive species and they're really messing up fishes all over the United States. So I don't ever shoot anything that is indigenous to Kentucky anymore. Only the invasive species. There's also grass carp in here, which is another invasive species that have taken off. So these fish are good to eat. And we're gonna talk about that in just a little while. It's amazing how many millions and millions of these fish that are there, they're not supposed to be there. So biologists are trying to figure out how to get these out of our waterways. Now the thing about these fish are, there's not a whole lot of meat on them. They're mostly head, but the meat that is there, because they're plankton strainers, they open up their mouth and the plankton, they eat the plankton in the water, the zooplankton. So the fish meat is really white and really clean and it's tasty. It we is. did it three ways. Brian Vollen and I did, his producer for Kentucky Field when I worked over there. We tried it three different ways. It was absolutely wonderful. We'll talk to somebody here in the next week or so about that. But we had fun down there, didn't we, Grandma? We did. What did you think about that, seeing that for the first time? I was. I would not want to fall in the water, I'll tell you that. But I enjoyed watching you shoot the fish. It wasn't amazing. You got one every shot, yes. That was fun. How many there were? That was fun. So maybe one day you can help me shoot some fish, both of you. Would you like to shoot a fish someday? Yeah. I think we can probably make that happen. Fun. <laughs>
and I'm just packing them as tightly as I can into these jars, raw packing. What I want to do is push it down in there, get as much of the air pockets out as I possibly can. So we're just going to continue to cut this up in pieces. If there's any bones, they'll just kind of disintegrate. Yeah, don't they? Unless, disintegrate. unless there's some great big bones, which, which we've, we've checked these right. for that. So with the raw packing, you want about an inch of head space. But I'm also going to take just a little bit. Now this is pickling salt. Just a little bit of salt. A little bit in the top. A little bit goes a long way. A little bit of pepper. Just gives it a nice flavor. Don't have to use much. Really, really, really gives it a nice flavor. Okay, so I'm going to take just a little bit of vinegar. I'm going to wipe that top off. Make sure there's nothing obstructing that lid. Put the lid on. Let me get that fairly tight. You notice I put zero liquid in there. Mm -hmm. Now when the jar is finished, there will be liquid right. in there. It cooks that liquid out of it. And I'm going to continue to do this for four jars. Now when this comes out, it's flaky, it's salty. It's got a good consistency. Next step, place our jars into the counter. You never want your water in your canner to be two-thirds full. You have to be real careful about that. I put a little extra water in this because of the amount of time that it takes to cook these. Right. Where deer or beef mm -hmm. or chicken would be less time, you have to go with fish 100 minutes. That's one hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. So that's where we're at here. Now, a couple things you got to remember. Make sure your liner has no irregularities. Make sure that it's supple. Right. Make sure that it's not dry rotted because mm -hmm. a lot of time, a lot of times people wait two or three years before they use it. Yeah. Check that for sure. Also check your vent hole. That's the most important thing. Now this may seem strange, but you can blow through yeah. that. Make sure you can see through that. Make sure that that can vent. What happens if that can vent? Got an explosion. Pressure? <laughs> Cooker? You don't need to. Through that. the ceiling. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we've checked all that. We're going to check the top. Get it on here. Okay, we're going to line our arrows up. We're going to seal this. Now you heard a little bit of pressure coming out there as well. Next is your weight. And you have to wait. Mm -hmm. W-A-I-T on your weight. W-E-I-G-H-T. This is five pounds. And each little ring is an additional five pounds of weight for pressure. Right. Now the thing about it is, if you are in an elevation above a thousand feet, check your book. Check your book. We are not. So 10 pounds of pressure means one ring. Now I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait until I see steam coming out. Now once steam is coming out for about 10, 15 minutes, it's already starting to bubble. Once the steam comes out for 10, 15 minutes, then we place the jiggler the weight on top. Right. Once it starts jiggling, that's when you start your timer for 100 minutes or an hour and 40 minutes. Okay. All right, it's time for the jiggler. See how that instantly popped up? Yeah. It's ready. Okay. It's ready. It's now under pressure. Now, underneath that weight, enough pressure will eventually build so it'll start that to move. Yeah. And that'll be just enough pressure to where that rocks gently instead of blowing it through right. the roof, which good. we don't want. No. Now, you can do this with salmon, you can do this with trout, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you what, out of all the fish that I've had, I almost think that the big head, you've had it. Oh, yeah. When Jim Doom, now he takes and makes like a tuna fish salad out of it, except with big head carp. Right. It's absolutely delicious. We used crackers and we dipped. We made it like dip. It's wonderful. That's good. Our jiggler is jigging. That's what you want, right? Our weight is functioning mm -hmm. properly. This pops up in the early part. That makes all the steam come here. Okay. That's adequately applying 10 pounds of pressure. And we are on our way. Now, let's go sit down and have some lemonade. Okay. One hour and 40 minutes. Okay. Okay, hour. Hour and 40 minutes is up. We're gonna turn this off. What'll happen, this will gradually die down. Mm -hmm. Our little indicator will pop down. At that point, your pressure is off enough so you can safely take the lid off. Now, I have seen people, old timers, they lift this up on the edge and My let, a little, bit of, yeah. Yeah. let a little steam off yeah. here, let a little steam off there. That, I think it's better just to let it do its own thing. Yeah. When this pops down again, you won't hear the internal noises of the pan and all the boiling, and you're safe to take the lid off. Yeah. But don't push it. Don't push it. We've got plenty of time. All 
All right, now we're casually keeping some water warm over here for our next project. All these things that we're doing tonight, we're gonna to end up with one final product. Yay. Can you bake some bread today? That's a hint. <laughs> Here's our fish. It doesn't look that appetizing. You say, oh man, I want some of that. But when you take the lid it's off delicious. and you taste it, it's absolutely yeah, it wonderful. Again, that little bit of salt and that little bit of uh -huh. pepper really flavors that up. And it makes wonderful, you would call it tuna salad, but it's whatever it might be, right. big head salad. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're heating some water up. We're gonna set our fish out of the way. Let me give you the recipe for this, and you can see as we go along what we're doing here. We're gonna take roughly five decent sized tomatoes. We're gonna cut those up, cube those up in little small cubes. Think about pickle relish, that's what we're making. Then we're gonna do our sweet peppers. We're gonna do a half of the red, half of the green, and half of the yellow and a good solid half an onion at least. Then we're gonna do two cups of cabbage, roughly. We're gonna take one cucumber. I'm gonna leave the skin on. I'm gonna split it up into four pieces, then I'll let you chop that up. Now those are the vegetables that we're putting into this. We're gonna sprinkle them with our salt, one and a half tablespoons of pickling salt. We're gonna mix that all up and refrigerate overnight. After that sets all night. We're gonna take that out, we're gonna drain it, and we're gonna rinse it. Then we're gonna take our dry ingredients and mix with a third a cup of water and about one cup of apple cider vinegar, three quarter tablespoon of turmeric, and one and a half teaspoon of mustard seed. We're gonna do three quarter tablespoon of celery seed. We're gonna boil, bring that to a boil. After it comes to a boil, bring it back a little bit, put your sugar in, bring the boil back up. We got a cup and a fourth of sugar. At that point, put all your vegetables in, all your ingredients are together. Bring it to a boil, just for a few minutes, and then boom, to go. into the jars, into the hot bath for 10 minutes. This is not That's pressure quick. cooking, this is hot bathing. 10 minutes. Now the thing that keeps this on the shelf longer is vinegar and sugar yeah. and salt. So three months, I would say. This will be all gone in three months. Mm. But again, this is not pressure cooked. Now the fish, I would say easy, a year on that. Some people have gone a lot longer. Yeah. On meats, we eat our canned goods within the year. Right. That's just us. We're right. not looking for a world record shelf length. We're looking for food that's ready to go and we use it rather quickly. We got a boil going on over here and have had for a few minutes. We're gonna take this, and we'll make sure you get equal amounts of juice per jar, so mix it up real good. You smell that? It smells good. The old kitchen smells good right You know now. what, I remember when my mom and all the ladies from church would get together, and it'd be corn one week, and, and sometimes she just did stuff herself. Yeah. But I remember the smell of her doing chow chow and just the corn, I remember shucking the corn and cracking the beans. Oh, I hated doing that at the time. Now it seems like such good memories. Only about a half inch head space needed here. It smells so good in here. Doesn't it though? Yeah, it smells wonderful. Now each one of these, I'll take just a little bit of vinegar on a paper towel and wipe that lid off so there's no obstructions. These go directly into the hot bath. 10 minutes. This is so simple, isn't it? it After is all so the simple. cutting up's the hard part, but. Now, when I'm hot bathing, I want my water just to barely cover those jars. Right. When you're pressure cooking, they do not have to be covered. Okay. All right, so now, Mrs. Farmer, we got a 10 minute wait. Let's clean this up. Let's come back. I'm hungry. With a nice little sandwich. Hey. All right. Pretty nice. Look at that. And these pints go a long way. And I put a little bit of clear vinegar in the water before we start. That keeps yeah. the film from building up on the side of those. I think they're pretty to decorate with. I like how they look. Beautiful. Lovely. And the house smells so it good. It does, it smells so good. So where were we at? We have relish. Yes. We have fish. Mm -hmm. We have bread. Mm -hmm. And we have a dill pickle spear, which would make a wonderful companion for a sandwich. Yes, it would. Can we have one? As Sammy would say. So what we're gonna do, Mrs. Farmer, is cut some of our bread, if you'll hold that. What do you think, about like that? Yeah. Nice thin piece of bread, looks good. Nothing like fairly fresh bread. All right, there's our two pieces of bread, Mrs. Farmer. Okay. 
Now, if you will, do the honors there. This is fresh. <laughs> we had the same idea, we about bumped Ooh, heads. Smells good. So we have our relish right here. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take our fish and we're gonna simply pour off the juice. Right. Unless you wanna drink that fish juice, Mrs. Farmer, you can. Oh, thank you. If you'd like. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna, we're gonna say about half of that. Know, let's, let's, I, we might you know what, it. make the whole salad? Yeah, I think we we'll, should. You know what, let's I'll do it. it. Let's I'm do hungry. it. Let's eat on that for a couple of days. Starving. So I'm gonna simply break this up can I try a little piece? Yes, you can. Oh, <laughs> it smells heavenly. I could eat it just like that. I'm telling you. And you know, wow. say you're out and about, you're camping. Oh yeah. And you want a quick snack. You got your protein, you know where it came from. Look That's at that great. right there. So we're gonna come back with our tomato, green tomato relish. Hmm. <laughs> what do you think? That looks pretty Is that good. Mm-hmm. Looks delish. Okay, Ms. Farmer, go ahead and start with the mayo. So basically, however you would make your tuna salad, now I like a lot of mayonnaise, and Nikki does too. I do. What if we took a little more relish and put it right across the top of that, Ms. Farmer? Yes, and how about a nice piece of lettuce nice here, piece too. Of bib lettuce to put on top of there? Are you kidding me? Oh, I think. Nice and big. Absolutely. That's a good you know what? Sandwich. I'm gonna hand you this knife. This is cut it in half. Cut it in half. Look how pretty. All right, Mrs. Farmer. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Nice fresh bread mm -hmm. too. That's so good. Another thing, Mrs. Farmer. Mm. You want to make a dip for guests? Mm -hmm. Boom, look right here. Good idea. Mmm. <laughs> Take that, sit in front of the TV. You're right. <laughs> Have a snack, thank you. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It has been a long day. Yes, it has. But a rewarding day. Yes. That being said, we have so many recipes like this. Yes, we And do. if you wanted to find them, where would you go, Mrs. Farmer? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. I would go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, and if you will, hit that red dot. That's right. Guess what happens? Anytime we have a new video, it comes directly to you. Hmm. And our Facebook page is growing and growing, and we yes, want you there to share with us. Where would you go? How would you do it? Is I, it hard? It's not hard. You hit like. Oh, wow. That's too easy. <laughs> All right. Let's eat the rest of our sandwich. Mm -hmm. We'll split this pickle. But okay. before we do that, let's let everybody know it's all about good times. Good friends. Really good eats. We'll I'm see starving. you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Oh, did you hear that pop? Mm -hmm. It's done. To order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com.